Hi, my name is Mike Loginoff, and I'm the Chief Information Security Officer and the Chief Privacy Officer for NEOM. Okay, just a quick thank you uh, before I start to the eCrime and Cybersecurity Congress team for pulling this marvelous event together. It's a real pleasure and an opportunity to be speaking to you today. A little something about NEOM in terms of our history and where we are and our location. We're based in the northwest corner of Saudi Arabia in the Tabuk region, uh, which is along the Aqaba coast. And we're lucky enough to enjoy something in the region of 468 kilometers of pristine coastline, surrounded by 25,000 square meter tall mountains and, you know, a very pristine and beautiful landscape and I'm very uh, privileged to be here. So NEOM is the land of the future, that's what it stands for. And here we have some of the best and brightest brains on the planet addressing some of the great issues that mankind face, whether that's in climate change or you know, advances in technology. From a cybersecurity perspective specifically, I'm here looking for ways to ensure that the future digital landscape of NEOM is pristine, protected, and actually leads the world in terms of new ways of working. We know the internet is a pretty broken place. So here I have the opportunity to address that. And that's what we're doing. So we're looking for new innovation, new ways of working, and actually bringing to the table great innovation in terms of protecting future cities, future ecosystems, and you know the livability of mankind generally. From my perspective, there's three kind of cities at the moment. There's the, the physical city, you know, the dumb city, if I, if I can put it that way, that most of us still live in today. We're moving towards this concept of smart cities, where we have a lot more technology and we think about smart homes, smart transportation, smart travel, whatever it might be, the word smart seems to appear in the smart city title and means different things to different people. Then the next level on that is the cognitive city. So what does that mean? Well, the cognitive city really takes all the information from the smart city, brings it to life and makes it meaningful. It's a self-learning city. It's using information in order to improve the livability for the people that live there, to make government flow easier, and to make it just a much more incredible environment that embraces all the latest technologies in an organic learning way. That means that transportation will turn up on time for you. It means that your interactivity with your banking, the e-government components, whatever it might be, all flows much easier because it's learning how to do it much better as it moves and progresses through time. Now, all of that comes at a price. We've got to secure it, you know, uh, because if that uh, environment is breached in any way, then the damage that could be done is clearly, you know, of significance. So my job as Chief Information Security Officer and Chief Privacy Officer is really to ensure that our digital landscape is kept as clean, as pristine as our physical environment is. And we have an unprecedented opportunity, as I say, to do that in as much as we have no legacy technology to think or worry about. Sure, there are systems that will come in, but we'll check every single one of them to ensure that they are pristine, clean, tested and warranted and certified to a level and a standard that I will set as the Chief Information Security Officer for any technologies that need to be deployed across the NEOM estate. How will NEOM address the cybersecurity threats that are out there, recognising that the Internet of Things will form a huge part of our world Edge computing is coming in, 5G technology is a major part of the requirement here. And these are things that we take very seriously, of course, because they are leading edge technologies and we need to make sure they are secure. Instead of being reactive, we're very proactive in everything, you know, from waking you up in the morning to what time you should go to bed at night in order to maximize your health through to ensuring that you know, major health incidents are thought of and controlled before they become a major incident. You know, a simple example, your alarm clock in the morning is connected to your sleep patterns. It'll wake you up at an appropriate time of the day, you know, that's appropriate to your health and well-being. Okay, you've got to get to the office, if there's still offices around, of course, in a post-COVID world. You know, if we think that we've got a journey to make somewhere, it'll wake us up at an appropriate time because it'll have checked the traffic ahead 
And if there's two hour delay in traffic, there's no point in me waking up at eight o'clock when leaving at nine o'clock is fine. So it'll be ahead of the game and help me manage my day in a more effective, efficient way. That's a very simple kind of explanation. If I've got a flight, the flights are delayed, this will tell me. It'll let the people that I'm going to meet know in advance that I might have delays. So it's really about enhancing the livability of the people that are living in the NEOM environment uh, from health and well-being perspective. So through the use of technology and monitoring of health on an ongoing basis, we're able to preemptively intervene instead of waiting till post-heart attack, for example, we can look for signals and signs early on and address the issues there. So if we can do that, then we enhance the livability and the lifespan of our citizens and the people that live in NEOM, hopefully by at least 10 years. So some very exciting technology use there. From a cybersecurity perspective, I need to defend all that data. GDPR and data privacy people in the audience will, will know that that's sensitive private information. So all of that needs to be considered and is being considered in the way that we approach things through regulatory controls, through policy, through standards, etc. NEOM is an IoT environment, which means that there's data flowing everywhere across this cognitive city all of the time. It's a self-learning city. And, you know, I need to protect that environment from those that would do us harm, from those that would seek to adversarial breach our systems and use that data against us. So there are some very sensitive components to that, like health data, like financial information. NEOM is a cashless environment, so, you know, we don't have to worry too much about the use of cash. But nonetheless, digitally, we have digital wallets, we have digital twins. Everything we do starts with digital on the most part. What we have to realize and recognize is that NEOM is an ecosystem, you know, within which there are cities, a number of cities, and these are all talking to each other as we move forward and learning from each other. So from a cyber again perspective or a criminal crime perspective, if something happens over here in one city or that part of the, the NEOM digital estate, then it all comes to me and I have oversight in a single pane of glass as to what's happening. That allows me the opportunity to put in place a command and control structure to deal with initiatives. So from a NEOM national perspective, if I can put it that way, you know, a CISO, I have the, the overarching visibility that I need to protect and defend my threat landscape. And that's very important. What I can see, I can defend. How is NEOM looking at quantum? And how will quantum computing impact on the cybersecurity and the security of NEOM moving forward? Well, we're looking at quantum today. Quantum exists in terms of the generation of secure keys. It's a random number that is truly random and we can use that in ways to protect our systems from the perspective of identity management, for example. But yeah, quantum is coming. Quantum will be here soon. It has a major impact on the future of the cybersecurity industry generally. Why? Because today we're reliant upon encryption of systems in order to protect us. Quantum removes that particular tool set and implements and, and provides new ways of, of approaching security as we move forward into the future. A lot of other technologies that are coming along beyond quantum that we have to equally give consideration to. One of the areas I'm particularly uh, enthused by, interested by, is the area of nanotechnology. You know, nano being millions and millions or billions of tiny computers to interact. And, you know, nanotechnology will be built into the very fabric of everything that we do, not just in NEOM, but if we think buildings generally, the materials that are used to create and build things like, you know, aeroplanes, whatever they might look in the future. You know, if the, if the wing of an aeroplane is intelligent and can stress test itself, then it can identify when weaknesses might occur. So there are so many uses for nanotechnologies, whether it's in health and well-being, you know, looking for anomalies or, or cancerous cells within the body or whatever. You know, that's one use of them. In security, you know, if you can imagine just walking up to a door, touching the door, and the door knows who you are just through the handprint that you're leaving, the DNA that is there, to recognizing that. So things like keys, we don't need them anymore, you know, because the room is smart enough to know who you are just by the gate, the way you walk and what you touch and how you touch it and things like that. So all of that information through artificial intelligence, machine learning, comes together to create a whole new dynamic around security. 
and making it much more difficult because our jobs in, on the good guy side of the line is to make the job of the criminals much more difficult, much more costly, much more ineffective. We're moving towards humanoids, droids, the bringing in of, of drones to move things around. You know, all of these things we have to think about because they could all be weaponized and used against us if they are attacked through some kind of cyber algorithm or whatever it might be moving forward. Software itself is morphing and morphs. So what you're seeing today, you know, it can be deployed into our systems and the technologies that we have looking for that particular type of anomaly or type of attack or whatever it might be, the software changes and morphs into something new very quickly, you know, and hides itself within the systems much more cleverly than it ever did in the past. So from an individual human perspective, you know, for me, and as I say, my peers across the industry, for all of us, keeping up with advances, changes in the environment is a huge challenge. You know, we're constantly learning. We're constantly learning new things. Yes, we're developing technology that allows us to monitor a lot of this stuff, but that crossover between what I can do as a human being and what a machine can do in terms of its rate of learning and knowledge and the volume of knowledge that it can create and deal with, you know, it's far surpassed what me as an individual or most human beings can actually uh, deal with. There is no thing as 100% SAB security. You know, that's a point that does need recognising. The best we can achieve is to be as close to that figure as we can possibly get. But if we ever think we're 100% secure, then that's when the bad things happen, you know, because you sit back on your laurels. And I like to think that's a truism. You know, it's the ability to be able to foresee what we need to do today in order to reach a point in the future where we are secure. What we're moving to now is a world where cybersecurity will become commoditized. By that I mean it will be a utility within the makeup of any city or living environment. So much like we pay for policing today, for example, in some countries anyway, through, you know, our our taxes, you know, whether it's council taxes or, you know, a citizen tax or whatever that might be, cybersecurity will just become a commodity, like you're paying for your electricity, your water, your air conditioning, and those aspects. If we look at the current infrastructure, the way the world, the cybersecurity world is architected, it's built around trying to fix the effects, not the cause. So we have sticking plasters, we have bits of technology that are there to solve the effect and not the problem. So we've lived with the problem for many, many years and not solved the problem. At Neom, we're looking at what is the problem, really truly understanding it and coming up with novel, new and innovative ways to redefine, reinvent the paradigm of cybersecurity. And that means thinking very differently. It means thinking out of the box. It means not being held back by past paradigms and being told, well, it can't be done or that's not the way that we do it. It really is about breaking that mold and thinking about, well, actually, we are looking at things that will bring a complete new way of thinking to bear. Most of the innovation never actually makes it into the commercial world. You know, the big companies are looking for you know, the golden bullet that will provide them with the massive returns necessary in order to launch it commercially. So most new innovation never gets to market. It's been there and it's been designed and it sits on the shelf. And that's true for a lot of big commercial organizations. Neom, you know, we get a chance to take it out of the laboratory, into the field, into the living community that is Neom, you know, we're looking to build to a million people here rapidly over the next few years. And that's probably the biggest living lab of this type, certainly, with this type of opportunity in the world today. So, you know, we can test things at scale. And that's attractive to a lot of the large technology companies as well. You know, in, in terms of population, we might be quite small, but in terms of what we're doing, we're very big and very impactful. So there, there are things that Neom can offer to global technology companies to innovate that can't be done, in my view, anywhere else in the world at the level that we're doing here in Neom. 
Thank you all for listening to myself today and my viewing experiences. It's been a great pleasure addressing you today. And uh, thank you also to the e-crime and uh, cybersecurity Congress team for pulling such a wonderful event together. Bye.